Hi guys, it's um, Sam for Digital Meet again. And in this tutorial, we're gonna take a look at how we can create a um, uh, a run button. So basically when we hold the right trigger down on our Xbox controller, um, it runs. And obviously the right trigger is uh, gonna have to be a float value, just like the last tutorial, we did the left trigger zoom. So you can actually get sort of like a gradient, um, you know, it's not just an on or off button, there's degrees that it can be on or off. So it can be halfway, so you'll be zoomed in halfway or fully, and it will give you the full value. And we can do that with the run button as well. So if you've got the trigger pressed down halfway, you can be, you know, like jogging. And if you press it fully, you can be at a full sprint. So that's what we're gonna do. So let's crack on with it. I'm gonna create, uh, um, this by the way is the scene as it was when we left it in the, in the last tutorial. I'm just gonna save it, make sure. Okay, so let's create uh, an empty object. I'm going to name this right trigger Oops. trigger run, if I could spell properly. I'm just going to lob that in a hierarchy so it's all all nice. Yeah, this is all all good. And then on that uh, right trigger run, I go down to my FSM window, right click and add FSM. And as every other time, oh, by the way, um, oh, we've got an error here. I don't know what that is. Um, set camera field of view. Set camera of view on oh, scene GUI, blah, blah, blah. Okay, we don't need to worry about that. We can clear this. <coughs> Sorry, diversion there. Okay, so this right trigger run. Um, as always, I'm gonna call my state listener. It doesn't have to be listener, by the way. You can name it anything you like. It's not important that it's called that. It's um, that's what I like. To, that's just what I call it. Like to call it. Okay, so let's have a look at our left trigger zoom. In this one, we needed to get the value of our. We need to get um, get the axis, so the left trigger. So I'm going to do the same for the right trigger. Go to action browser. Type in get trigger. Uh, what am I doing? Get axis. Oh, that's what I want. There we go. So add action to state. Come out of that. Needs an axis name. Just like before, we go down to projects, edit project settings, go to our input. Um, and we can see here that the right trigger is, you know, its name is right trigger. That's what we named it. So let's go back to the right trigger run and dump that value in here. Okay, lovely. Brilliant. Now, what's the next step for us? Just like the left trigger zoom before, we um, when you press it, it creates a value, and we store that value in a variable we created. So we're gonna do that for the right trigger as well. So where do we store this? New variable. And we're gonna call this variable, you guessed it, right trigger. Press. Again, you can name it anything you like, but I'm calling it that because it's quite clear. And uh, we want to check this on every frame. It says here, typically you would set this to true. We do want that for true because you wouldn't just check it once and then leave it. You want to check it every frame to see if it's being pressed or not. Okay. So that's pretty much that bit set up. We've got a, a multiplier here and we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. Uh, the next thing we're going to need is a float add. So, float add, we'll add this action to the state. And it's going to, let me just drag this up so we've got a little bit more screen real estate. Float add, float variable. Well, what this does is it's going to ask us for a variable. Obviously, we've taken the right trigger press, stored it in this right trigger. Um, you know, we've got right trigger, we've got a variable um, that's, it's gonna store that right trigger information in this variable, right trigger press. And then what we're gonna to wanna to do is take that right trigger press, so we're gonna change that to right trigger press. And then whatever that value is, it's gonna add whatever we decide to add. Okay, so that's good. Now, let's have a look. The next thing we're gonna need is set property. Because 
I'll just get it up and then I'll explain why we're going to need this set property. And you can see it's under the um, sort of group of unity object. And it basically sets the value of any public property or field on the targeted unity object. Drag and drop any component attached to a game object to access its properties. So let's add this to, to the state. Now, I should probably explain this set property thing a little bit better. Um, it's asking for what our uh, target object is. And basically, let's, let's go to the FPS controller. What we want to, what the property that we want to access uh, and change is this walking speed here. Yeah, currently set to 1.5. Um, we want to, we want to access this property. Um, so basically, I'm gonna have to drag this script into our. So, so just so I can grab this, because if I go back to this, obviously the the inspector clicks back so I'm just gonna go back to my FPS controller and lock this and a little lock button up there so now it doesn't matter where I click it will it will stay there go back to my right trigger run um, now initially it's saying what's your target object and I was trying to actually drag the FPS controller in like an idiot but it's actually this script that you want to that you want to drag in so you drag that in and as you can see the object type has come up unity standard assets dot character What's the property that we want to access? Well, it's this walk speed. So if you click this drop down and have a look, there doesn't appear to be an, uh, an option for that. And there's a reason for this. If we click on this script, it actually highlights it in the um, project window here. And let's click it again, just so, so it's this first person controller. Now, this is a very minimum piece of scripting we're going to have to do. Tiny, in fact, is one word. So we want to access walk speed. So let's double click on this. And what it will do is it will open Visual Studio, which is allow, allow us to look at this um, script. Now, if I scroll down here, we've got, uh, we've got some float values and whatnot. We've got all kinds of stuff going on in there. But if we go to the top, we can see the sort of classes um, and one of them is oh look at this m walk speed and that is if I pull this out of the way we can see here it says walk speed so this is what we want to we want to grab now you notice that it's got private float written in front of it and this basically means that it's private it's um, it hasn't been exposed so other things can't get access to it so if we delete private and turn it to public, it means that it can be, it, you know, we've got access to it. It's exposed. And then, so that's all we have to do. Turn it from private float to public float. And then, um, yeah, save. There we go. So that should have saved it now. We can close that down and hopefully um, something going on. It's having to think because it's probably updating. Yep. So if we go to right trigger, click our listener again, and then go to property. There we go. It's exposed M walk speed because we've made it public. So now we can actually add that to it. Okay. So what is the walk speed? Well, we can set a value, but we don't actually want to do that. We want to make it so the walk speed is right trigger press. Whatever the right trigger press is, that is going to determine what our walk speed is. Okay. And also we've got here, set every frame. We want to do that. We want it to check, you know, what's going on every frame. And we actually uh, want to do that with our float add as well, because that needs to be working in conjunction with all this stuff as well. So we've got a multiplier of one, we've got an add of zero, and um, this is all set up as we need it now. So let's just, let's have, let's press play and see what the hell happens. Okay, so um, I did lock this tonight. Okay, so the walk speed is 1.5. So let, let's just watch this value as we press play. Okay. So you'll see now that our walk speed has dropped to zero. 
and I can't actually move forward. And there's a reason for that. So let's have a look. I'll drag this back up. And it's because our flow add is zero. Um, so this is really sort of determining what this walk speed is. We've got it set at 1.5 there, but um, let, let, let's just put something like a value of 10 in the add and press play. And now you can see that the walk speed is actually a value of 10 and we're zipping around there. Oh, and I can jump, crouch and all the other stuff that we already, a bit of a zoom there. Okay, so you can see that we've got a value of 10 in our walk speed right here. And if you notice here, we've got a multiplier of one. So it's this 10 plus one when we press the trigger button. So if I go back to the game window and run around, you can see the walk speed on the right hand side there is 10, but look what happens when I press the uh, right trigger button down. It goes to 11, it's, it's plus one. And if I go halfway, it'll go halfway between 10 and the, the top value, which is, you know, the 11, because it's plus one. So that gives us a clue what's going on now. Um, you can see our walk speed. I, I already defined it at 1.5. So in my float add, let's define it as 1.5. Okay. And when I want to run what do we multiply this number as so i've got it on one at the moment so what will happen if i multiply it by two let's have a look so let's check this walk speed out again if i hit play right now it's got a walk speed of 1.5 which is our uh, value that we've got in our float add and when i press the right trigger fully down it's 3.5 so it's added two on top. And that's not bad, that. In fact, that's what I want. That's quite good. So we've got our walk here. Let's just open up this window. Escape out. Pull this down a bit. Okay. So that's just like a, that's a regular walking speed, I'd say. And then when you want to have a little bit of a run, you hold it down and you've got like a, a run there, running around. And again, because it's a float value, we can do a halfway house. So my walking speed is 1.5, we look at the right, and full on it's 3.5, but I can go in between if I wanted to, just hold it halfway down. And it's kind of like a little gentle jog. So that's a pretty simple and easy setup way of um, turning your right trigger button into a run button. So we've got quite quite a bit going on, on now. We've, we've built it up, we can move around, we can, crouch we can jump we can zoom in and out and we can run something to mention that i might cover in a later tutorial is uh if you um toggle your crouch on and then jump you'll still be crouched but jumping um you can actually set it up so when you jump you stand back up again i actually prefer this i think because there's no reason you can't up along like a fucking mong um if you were crouching down so why not anyway um so that wraps up the tutorial about um setting up a trigger button as a run button um don't forget to check out the website guys digitalmeet.uk there's the facebook twitter oh god i'm boring myself bye